Okay. Good morning. Uh, yeah. After lunch, rather. We're going to read Psalms 80. We're going to do some explanation in Psalms 80. And let the Holy Spirit have its way. Dear Father, we come to you right now. And we just sing praises to your name, Lord. We ask you to have your way today as we begin to study your word and learn from your word. We give you praise and honor and glory for what you're going to do, Father God. We just thank you for another day, another blessed day. Psalm 80, verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubim, shine forth. The great shepherd of the Christians, of course, is Jesus. They are a spiritual Israel. From a prophetic point of view, then this is to the this is to our Lord. We also see in this this is the presence of Almighty God, who is over the mercy seat in the tabernacle and in the temple. Certainly, the physical house of Israel had been led like a flock. The presence of God led them out across the wilderness to the promised land. We also know that Jesus is the light of the world. Wherever there, there is a presence of God, there is light or fire or clouds. This above them then is a request for the light of God to shine forth, even brighter than in the past. Some experts believe that this is speaking of the ten tribes who were headed up by Manasseh, being led by the great shepherd. Manasseh was Joseph's son. Verse 2. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength and come and save us. Amen. Now Ephraim and Manasseh were sons of Joseph. The psalmist here realizes there was a special anointing on Joseph. Amen. God had protected him through all his troubles, and the blessings had passed to his sons. Benjamin is mentioned because Joseph and Benjamin were the only two sons of Rachel, whom Jacob loved more than the others. Even near kinsmen sometimes break up and go their own separate ways. Uh, the psalmist is crying out for help from God. The psalmist felt if perhaps his name meant very little to God, he would use some names that would get God's attention. Christians are well aware to get the way to get to the Father to hear your prayer is to ask in the name of Jesus. There is something about that name. Amen. Verse 3. Turn to us again, O God, and cause our face to shine, and we shall be saved. The psalmist is very well aware that the only possible hope for anyone is God. I have said this before, but it bears saying again. Noah was saved in the flood. Daniel was saved in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved in the fire. None of these people of God were saved from their problem. They were saved in the problem. These people, the psalmist is begging for here, may be in captivity. But God can deal with them in captivity, possibly even better than he could when they were having no problems. Amen? It is not so important the circumstances you find yourself in as it is to how you handle the circumstances. God is never unaware of our problem. In fact, he is 
in it with us. Amen. Like there was a fourth figure in the fire. One like unto the Son of God. To leave more about to learn more about this, read Daniel chapter three. We know that God will turn again excuse me, and, and shine his face upon anyone who loves and follows God. Psalms eighty verse four. O Lord God of hosts, how long will thou be angry against the, the prayer of thy people? Sin causes separation from God. This was not just a sin that they had committed for a grievous sin. This is still speaking of the mixing of false gods and with their real God. God's anger had been kindled hotter because of what they had done. It seemed their prayers were getting nowhere. Just keep on praying. God will heal, hear and forgive. Verse 5. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears and givest them drink in good measure. The Israelites had been an openly rebellious people. God had forgiven them over and over. There is a limit to how many times he will forgive them. This seems it could be that time. They are not only praying, but they are crying with prayers, with their prayers. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It, their tears are in everything because they do not cease to pray and cry to God. Verse 6 and 7. Thou makest us a strive unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause our face to shine, and we shall be saved. We see the psalmist actually trying to put the responsibility for change on the Lord. Isn't that really what happened when Jesus came and became our substitute on the cross? We were not worthy to be saved, but he saved us anyway. God of hosts could mean God of your armies. Verse 8, Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast cast out thy, the heathen and planted it. John, 1, John 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. The trouble with the physical house of Israel as they did not abide with God. Verse 9. Thou preparest room before it, and this caused it to take deep root, and it filled the land. This is also speaking to Joshua, defeating and removing the heathen from the land. Soon the inheritance was divided, and the children of Israel began to live in the land. Verse 10. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like the godly ce goodly cedars. This was indeed a land of milk and honey. It was fertile. It was fertile land and, green, and grew giant trees. The family of God moved in, and the land prospered. Verse eleven and verse twelve. She went out her. She sent out her boughs unto the sea, and her branches unto the river. Why hast thou broken down her hedges? Amen. So that all that they which pass by the way do pluck her. When Israel began on this journey from Egypt to the promised land, God had been the hedge around them and helped them against their enemies. He had stood between the Red Sea and the Israelites. While the Israelites crossed unharmed, he had been with them in battle, and the enemy had run away, knowing that Israel was protected from God by their God. Now it appears that the protection of God is gone. Their enemy can have fl flee run on them. Th their enemy can have free, excuse me, run on them. Now that Israel's God is not protecting her. All of the people around her are talking, are taking whatever they want from her. Verse 13. 
The boar out of the wood does waste it, and the wild beast of the field does devour it. This is just saying the supernatural protection from wild beasts that they had before is all go also gone. God is angry with them and has removed his protection. Verse 14 and 15. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this wine, visit this vine. And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted, planted, and the branch that thou madest strong for thyself. Let us look at this prophetically and see the church which the right hand of God, which is Jesus, planted. This could even be saying, Father, look down and save the church because of your son's great establishment of it. Do not see your, our sin. See your precious son, son's blood, Jesus. Jesus established the church for us. We did not do it. Amen. Verse 16. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. We see the destruction of God's people. They will perish unless God intervenes. Unless God looks down from heaven and has mercy, they are gone. Verse 17 and 18. Let thy hand be upon the men of thy right hand upon the Son of Man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee, quicken us, and we, we will call upon thy name. Quicken us, okay. It says in Romans 10, verse 13, For whatsoever, excuse me, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 8, verse 11. But it's the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is a quickening spirit. They and we need to help us. And him is life, and the life is the light of man. And in verse 19 of Psalms 80, Turn us again. O Lord of God of hosts, cause our face to shine, and we shall be saved. This is said again to give impact to the statement. Man is his own worst enemy. We cannot save ourselves. God had to send a Savior to save us from sin and death, but also to save us from our own blundering mistakes. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And that concludes Psalms 80 for today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's find a, a worship song and we'll pray before I close. He knows my name. Let's see, Lord, what do you want me to play? Always ask the Holy Spirit. Always ask the Holy Spirit. Oh, here's something. This is not a song, but... God How would you like it. this? Stroll out of your world-class hotel this. in Singapore and into one uh, of the most vibrant streets. We just read songs. Like so, here's the deal with scars. You must understand when it comes to a relationship, Amen. when it comes to love, when it even comes to getting involved in a business venture with other people. It is so important that you know and understand that every single person you're involved with comes with scars. Amen. Everyone, it doesn't matter how great they look. It doesn't matter how mech dreamy or mech sexy because she's Miss Sexy. It doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. Everyone comes with scars. And it's important for us to know that because sometimes it is so important because sometimes we get in a facade, we get tricked by the enemy.
Uh, yes, we we get wooed into thinking because of how great that person looks or, oh, here it is, how great they make us feel. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that that person's got their crap together and there's no baggage in the trunk or skeletons in the closet. Whatever. You must know no matter what you do that everybody has scars and you need to prepare yourself for that you need to maybe even do a discovery you may need and here it is for some of you that are courting you may need to walk that relationship out for a while and have you go through different things before you just stop hopping into the bedroom or you come on now relationship to another level so that you can find out a little bit more about hey what's what's really happening underneath the shirt not what's happening underneath the sheet you need to find out what's happening behind that head you know what are some folders you got in your mind that have scar tissue scar tissue scar tissue Okay, you need to walk it out. You know, here's the thing about God. God doesn't just force himself on us. God knows that we have scars, so he walks it out with us. God just doesn't say, look, you need to be perfect, and you need to be completely healed before you come with me. Matter of fact, God says, look, I know you've got scars, and because I can see those scars, it allows me to see who you are, and because of the true picture of who you are, I choose to love you no matter what that's what's called unconditional love okay so again heads up everybody from a business partner to someone you're dating to even your husband I can't tell you how many people I coach in marriages <laughs> where we're sitting there coaching whether it's online or if they come to my home sitting with me I hear one of them the husband or the wife said well he was just never like this she's changed mm. I don't know if she's changed or he was never like this or was it because you didn't do what I call in a relationship we must study the people we're involved in we must get to know the people that we let up into our tight circle the next one is you must know that those scars will be revealed and will enter your relationship at some point you must know that those scars that everybody comes with, that if you don't find out about it, if you know you've got scars and you've not dealt with it, I need you to know that those scars are going to show up in your relationships. That means in your marriage. That means when you're dating people. That means when you're in business with people. It is going to show up. You can't hide it. You can't conceal it. God says everything in the dark will come into the light. So all your bones in the back, all your skeletons in the closet, all the people that maybe you beat up, you know, because they made you mad or even scar tissue, as I said earlier, that you've not healed on. It is going to show up in your Come on. I'm in Amsterdam, which is without a doubt the cannabis capital of the world. And Sorry about relationships. Can't tell you how many people I've talked to that have lashed out at me, and luckily I know, oh, that's scars. Because yeah. I wasn't even there when that happened, so I know this ain't about me. But for a lot of us, if we don't know it, how do we take it, you guys? We take it personal. Amen. And then for those that have scars, if we've never dealt with that, whether it's pain of a heartbreak, or it's the emptiness of feeling abandoned by a mom or a dad or being in an abusive home or having daddy or mommy issues guess what you're gonna bring that into your relationships it is going to show up you can't perpetrate who you really are the real you will show up whether you say I do first to whatever it is or you say it before you must know that those scars are going to show up eventually the next one is you must know that even though you have all these scars new ones are going to come up too wouldn't it be nice if we could say look this is all my scars that i've got this is all my stuff and this is it new scars are going to show up that means not only do we need to deal with these things there's going to be new scars that happen. I don't think we ever get to the point. Even those people who say, I'm good. Well, let me tell you what. Those that say, oh, I don't stress. I don't do anything. 
Be careful again with that because the word says, okay, are you in slumber? Are you not fighting? Are you not in the forefront? Are you not out there doing things for me? Because let me tell you what, when you go out and pursue a dream, when you go out and say, I want to be a millionaire and build a business, when you go out and say, I'm in love and I want a marriage that's on hot and on fire, or you go out and say, I choose you to be my mate, let's date or let's get engaged, you're going to have issues. So if your life is just a siesta, hmm, doesn't mean that you don't know how to give it to God. But God says that my well is everlasting. My healing is forever there. Because God knows no matter what, you're going to always have things that come up. You can't be prepared for it all. So I want you to know that even though there's there, there's going to be new scars that are coming up. Remember, we all have scars. We all got bones to deal with. Okay, that's a normal thing. People who say they don't, beware. <laughs> the next thing, I love this, is scars, when you do not deal with them, will shorten your lifespan. It will lessen your quality of life. Okay, it will make you a lesser person than you were designed to be. Okay, an example, I love this. When you truly go with an elite personal trainer, that means somebody who knows their stuff. That man, you train with them just for 30 days, your body is mutating into something different. Do you realize that one of the first things they do is they tell you, look, I can't just hop you on a piece of equipment. I can't just go do that because there are knots in your body that must be released. That in order to use your full muscle, in order to really become the full potential of who you are, we've got to release those knots. Because we want to work the whole muscle, not just a little bit. And those are restrictions, which means even if we start to get results, you're not going to get the maximum results that you can get with the full use of your body. And let me tell you what, when you knock those tight muscle tensions out, they hurt. But boy, when it's over, you may be in pain a couple days. But what comes after that? All of a sudden, you feel exhaled. Amen. Okay, so it is so important that you deal with scars. We got to deal with okay, you have to. Amen. To truly grow. To truly excel to your full potential. Your or you will only be able to become only a fraction of Amen. who God made you and your body to become. Ooh, Jesus. To be a Terminator Thank for Jesus. God. Thank Jesus. Thank Jesus. And you may only be, you know, like a Terminator, or let's say it's Transformer, those little bitty ones, that there were two of them, they were always, you know, you could tell they weren't the full potential of a, you know, Optimus Prime. They were the two little ones, and they were always, that's what you're going to end up becoming. <laughs> and God's like, look, you were meant to be Bumblebee or something. Okay, this, this don't even look like my child. You got to work out. Come on now those scar Come tissues on, you gotta work them out. and they're painful oh it's painful to work them out but you gotta work them out if you do not work out those scar tissues not only will you not become the person that's correct. That you're Come destined on. to be that's correct you will have those scars become the boogeyman in your dreams and we don't want the, and in your that, life. we don't want that no, the boogeyman. No, 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 you remember no, that no. word the boogeyman it's where you walk around in life you hesitate to things you you hesitate to jump in and, and go after things. That's right. Fear. This is you shopping. That's right. Let's play a little praise before I get off of here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise in this house. Come on now. I think I put the right one in there. Okay. Let's start playing. Hmm. Jesus was walking through the town and the crowd they gathered all the way. All right now, you gonna play? Don't do this now. All right. 
something fixing. Hmm. Hallelujah. I just put the CD in. I don't know what's. Alright, that won't do this now. This is my CD. I don't I want to play my. She is a anointed singer, I'm telling you. I got to get still. God can give me my new song. I know this is the new one. I mean, this is the one. I don't understand why it's not playing. Wow. This laptop has been giving me some problems. It should have done start it. Hmm. And that thing about it is, she is not on YouTube. She's not on YouTube. Wait, 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 wait. I know that's the right CD. Yeah, it's got to be. You tell me it's done messed up on me now. Already. Music. Music. Well, well, let me take it out one more time. Try it again. Mm. It says no disc. Okay, now there's a disc. Again, I just inserted the disc. I don't believe this. Don't tell me it's going to mess up today. Hmm. I don't think I recorded. Well, I got some on my anchor, but I don't know if I got. I guess I'm gonna have to refresh my. I understand this. He keeps trying to play. <laughs> well, I'll be. Jesus, 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 why is it not playing? Jesus was walking through the town in the town they gathered down. Check your ain't what I want. Hmm. Well, I may have to see if I can play it later. Let me, let me find. I really want. To. And this is you maximizing really at TJ Maxx. Get more of the brands you love and quality else. you want. I really wanted to play something else, but until that one gets started, uh, we'll play this one. I have to start that over. This one. Yeah. 
I cried holy. I cried holy. You gotta cry holy, holy. I dream Wait. of a city called glory. So bright. I cried holy. Yes, let's cry holy. And the angels all met me there. And they carried me from mansion. Yeah. Hey. 
to Bethel on me. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy to our name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bow down our head and we cry. Holy. Does God hear our prayers? Does God hear our prayers? Well, I think he does. But, you know, there's sometimes we have to talk to him a little bit. I know I've done, done Psalms uh, 80, but I feel led to ask if there's anybody that was like to give their life to Christ that do not know Christ. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I know there's a place I've been. Oh, Jesus. got it on my phone I don't have it I should have it saved here so I can just pull it up but I, I, I know what to say but I, I like the way this says it this reads it just so well because you know God did send his son to die on the cross for us for our sins but we've got to confess and we need to believe that he is. Okay, that's not. <laughs> okay. I don't think that's it either. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Does God hear our prayers? Well, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, which is Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's in John 3, 16. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, a complete life full of purpose. Purpose, John 10, 10. But here's our problem. Man is sinful and separated from God. We have all done, thought, or said bad things, which the Bible calls sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. The result of sin is death, spiritual separation from God, which is in Romans 6, 23. But there are good news. God sent his son to die for your sins. Jesus died in our place so we could have a relationship with God and be with him forever. God demonstrates his own love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8. But it didn't end with his death on the cross. He rose again and still lives. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John 14, verse 6. Would you like to receive God's forgiveness? We can't earn salvation. We are saved by God's grace. When we have truth, when we have faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. All you have to do is believe you are a sinner, that Christ died for your sins, and ask his forgiveness. Then turn from your sins. That's called repentance. Jesus Christ knows you and loves you. What matters to him is the attitude of your heart, your honesty. We suggest you pray in this following prayer to accept Christ as your Savior. 
Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask you for forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my Savior and follow him as Lord. From this day forward, guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you said that prayer, all you got to do is type that you that you said the prayer. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. All you have to do is, is uh, receive the... Uh, we just welcome you into the kingdom of God. And if you said that prayer now or said it later when you watch this, because I will be showing it on YouTube. Praise the Lord. Don't be ashamed to type that I am... I am saved. I, I, I accept Jesus as my Savior. Or, you know, I'm saved. And if you want to uh, continue, keep, if you want us to keep continue praying for you, or just let us know. Comment what you need. We will keep lifting you up in prayer. Give us your name. Give us your, uh, if you're new on here, let us know where you're from, what city, what day. Don't be shy. God loves you. I love you and God loves you more. God bless you.